visit with the Fresno Five Strangeness. Um, originally, we was going to do today's shows at a later time because uh, I think I'm telling it to you backwards. But what happens is we have in production uh, 10 travel shows from the trips that we took in 2004. And today's show I had intended to put into the time period when we had went to Toledo, Washington for the first time. So in the meantime, some other things came our way that need to be attended to and we wanted to share with you first because we don't want to interrupt that 10 week um, process there. And with all the renewed interest in the mountains in our volcanoes of Washington State, I thought I would separate this show and show you this one first. Now the opening shot that you saw, that's actually Mount uh, Rainier that I flew over in an airplane um, uh, here a, a while back and they were nice enough to let me uh, take a picture of it. And so the other thing I was asked to do in last week's show, we had displayed a lighthouse uh, with crystals and people were so excited about that lighthouse, they wanted to know where I, where I got it. Well, I got it from one of my sponsors, Lori Johnson, that stuck there dirty in, yeah, in Nurse Grime. And I don't know where she got it, but I have to agree with you, it is beautiful, so give her a call and um, She's in the credits at the end of the show, and um, maybe she can tell you where it came from, but because it was so popular, we put that there again. And so I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go to Toledo, Washington, and uh, where we doubled back on it uh, earlier in the year, uh, this time in the RV, the first time was in the car, and we'll just, uh, we spent some time there with a wonderful woman named Marie Oberg. She has the antique shop there. And um, so anytime we queued up, we can go. And it's right down the highway from us. So um, Howard the Duck, I'm sitting in my chair. Universe is going to just stop now. We are in the like now, that. So, so enjoy Toledo, Washington. Some people that we couldn't get to when we had the car. And uh, Lisa, look at the pretty trees over here. I need to see here where I'm going. I think I have to go straight. What's he doing? Toward the ocean and up the, uh, the mountain, up toward the pass. You have to talk loud. Okay. And we're off. Go to White Pass in Piakima. is park it down here and then walk back. This is a one way, so we'll go here. Telephone, look, they got their own telephone company. Hmm. What do you think of that? How oh, crazy. See it here? Yeah, it's okay. West Washington. Real Paw Bay and volcan Volcano Country. Um, there's some interesting facts that we found. And then, of course, Toledo would be right here.
Maybe not. Well, it is, but this is better here. And uh, we found out some interesting facts already. We're going to go to the uh, antique shop we showed you. And the lady has offered to take us upstairs. Now, the lady at the shop they gave us a little booklet, 2004 Lewis County uh, Travel Guide. In this uh, travel guide, we found a little tidbit that we thought was really interesting because the Hales is actually the last town uh, that we came from. So it is um, Olympia, Centralia, Chehalis, and then Toledo. So I'm going to read this to you here. In the little tidbit is Chehalis, the city of sand. Chehalis was originally named Sandeville after former New York steward Schuller Saunders, who in 1851 staked out 640 acres of a donation land claimed on what is now downtown Chehalis. He established the first post office on May 8, 1858 in his home. So showing you this while I'm reading this is kind of boring. So instead I'm going to show you some beautiful flowers that we got while we've been, since we've been here. The native Chehalis people called the area Chehalis, which meant sands due to the wet winters which produced sheets of water in the downlands, a view which was quite beautiful when the sun shone. Shone, what a word. The Sahelis, the Sahelis people were a dominant force in the area long before the Europeans arrived. The people used the river as their main means of transportation and to fish for salmon. They ate the berries which grew along the banks of the river and traded with other peoples who lived along the extensive Sahelis and Cowlitz River system. With the Europeans came new diseases, which nearly wiped the people out. However, they survived, and today the Confederate tribes of the Sahelis are based in Oakville. So I thought that might be a little nice tidbit before we go to the antique shop. And this one here basically talks about Toledo, the town that she's built. Um, I'm sure the lady will tell you about it, but a lot to do here has to do with cheese. They just have cheese festivals and cheese days. Um, uh, the father and the mothers of Washington State, Matilda Jackson, John and Matilda Jackson. They settled here in the prairie. The Jackson Hi House is five miles north of here. And the Jackson Highway, um, that's what they call the uh, the main highway that goes from Olympia all the way down to Portland. Um, and then uh, it goes to actually goes directly from Tomwadi to Toledo. And uh, it's the gateways to Mount St. Helens. When the eruption of 1980 occurred, Toledo was spared much of the devastation because the way it was located. So they were lucky on that. And this is Miss Lisa here. She is with me here today as a camera person and just to keep me company. How about that? So are you ready to go to the antique shop? I'm ready. Cool. And we just had lunch at Harry's. We're gonna go back tonight. There's a ghost living at Harry's. Harry himself. Harry himself, they said. Really pretty uh, flowers here. Right outside here where we parked. And that's where we're going. We're going upstairs to find more goodies. Of course, I came down to pick up some things that were here a couple of months ago. And guess what? They're gone already. The guy had a haircut. Look at him. This is a beautiful table here. I spotted it as soon as I got here. Just to remind you, we have taken you here before um, with Mrs. Oberg. And uh, just give you another Hello, Mr. Oberg, how are you? We couldn't stay away. Got well, this new haircut. Wow! <laughs> Spinning wheel. Wow! Just to remind you, we are at the Collitz River Antiques with Robert and Marie Oberg. 
On 2nd and Augustus Street. No. No, this is removed. This is 111 2nd Street. They moved. It's 111 2nd Street, but you can't miss it. That's a new doll. Well, and she pretty. Young teapot that Barb had that time on the other show, it's still here. Marbles, marbles, marbles. Fruit basket. Ooh, they look almost real. Look at there. Found cast iron skillets. Awesome. Steins from Europe. Didn't see those the last time either. Sure, but I think that's a piece of an armadillo. It's laying on its back, I think. My like. It's an alligator purse. Look at that baby. Leave it to me. It's not for sale. Only thing I want in the whole place, like always. Yeah, pretty. T yeah, look at that. Wow. Yes, a serious looking fellow. And that noise you hear is the air conditioning. This is a beautiful piece also. It's silver. And here's a mask. A pretty statue. Green machine frog band. Hey. Then, needless to say, I bought the table. You know that red table I showed you? And uh, they wouldn't sell me the alligator purse, but I did buy that table. And then we were talking about uh, the, uh, the Sahela stripes in Oakville. Now, last week, I told you that uh, we had went dancing all night with a band called uh, Society's Child. Well, lo and behold, this weekend, a lot of my viewers, a lot of you and the, the friends came and danced with us, so that is, uh, that was really appreciated now. Uh, of course, the Lucky Eagle Casino is part of that, um, that Chahila Stripe there. And, um, uh, and I want to tell you, when you came down the street in um, Toledo, uh, there is the College River, and then, then there is the hybrid goes a little straight, and then it, it kind of doesn't look like a fork in the road, but it is. If you go to the right, you end up in uh, Vancouver, Washington. But if for some reason you hang a little left there unknowingly, the same thing happened to us, it's gonna happen to you. You're gonna go around and around and around and around Mount St. Helens four times because you can't find your way off the mountain. And under the present circumstances, that would not be a good thing. So once you get to Toledo, make sure you bear to the left or you will end up on Mount St. Helens. And um, so they were lucky last time because they were so close under it. And uh, I don't know about this time with that lava, but they're wonderful people. And, and in the future, I'm going to take you to the same places from, an, uh, from the Native American perspective. So today we're going to have uh, Marie Oberg tell us uh, the story about her building and, and some other things that's of real interest. And so anytime we're ready, Oh, look at that, we have a friend. Uh, and, and they do say that they have bears and Bigfoot and all these things. Just a beautiful little town, um, like 50 miles from Olympia. So anytime we're ready, we're gonna follow Marie Oberg to her um, upstairs treasures in her building. There you go, coming out of that trunk. Well, hi. My great, great grandfather brought that across the Oregon Trail, oh. a covered wagon. Mm. So that one has special meaning that I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I have I display him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's gonna come up the stairs a little later of summer. Through this doorway here where you're standing. Uh -huh. That all of that is eighteen ninety two. It's just as it was when it was first mm -hmm. put in. Not really too many changes. Right? The doors still have the original hardware with the locks. Mm -hmm. And of course, the two girls are waiting for their boyfriends mm -hmm. to arrive. Oh, I'll need they, to And when they out. first built this place, it was a dance hall. Was it? And the loggers came in here at night. 
on the weekends. Mm -hmm. And the girls would dance with them when the music played. They had a fellow with the, play the violin, you know, to mm -hmm. play a little music. And then when he would stop, there was a man on the floor with, with tickets. And it was 25 cents. You bought another ticket and you could dance with the girl until the music stopped. Do you know the, uh, the Navajos still do that when you go dancing, you get yeah, paid? Yeah, yeah someone will talk, we always say, let's go to dance, dancing. To dance with the mm -hmm. girls, see? Cool. And in two years' time, he mm -hmm. completely paid for this building. A lot of by, dancing. By a lot of music. A lot of violin yeah. music. Ha, ha, ha. Upstairs window oh, here, upstairs. yeah. So we're now upstairs. Yeah, this was probably just a kind of a little entrance area mm -hmm. here when they first came in, maybe up the stairwell that's been since to mm -hmm. get out of here. Look at the chandelier here. Wow, it's beautiful. Of course, there's the air conditioner because it's cold. I mean, it's hot. The chandelier I put in. And you put in. It has a great history. Uh huh. It's an old handmade out of wrought iron. So it's not a crystal. Well, it's wrought iron, but it has crystal. There's little crystal chandeliers and uh -huh. brass fixtures. And in the catalog, which I was able to acquire, it's over five thousand dollars to oh, my. Get another one, all handmade. And I couldn't figure out why it should be so expensive, except that each wire must go through the wrought iron tubing somehow. I'm going to give you another, another uh, shot of this painting here. It's gorgeous. Can I ask Lisa? Yeah. You charge everything? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, for a sit down dinner. Mm -hmm. uh, As she said, this is an old Masonic building. Mm -hmm. Their first meeting here. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that probably put in a kitchen area, uh, all of the door woodwork and stuff may have been in 1919, uh, a fancy addition with windows done properly. I've had these doors put in for an office area, mm -hmm. and I keep all my historical um, archival stuff in there. So I often have to bring a pizza. Um, Copyright 1945. Now those pictures that are on the table there are all copies that those particular ones that came out of the uh, Los County Muse Historical Museum, mm -hmm. and they hold the original. This yeah. this I've had for years, so I have an original paper on now. Anyway, now I'm getting ready. Mm -hmm. See the big plate glasses are coming in, mm -hmm. and then behind from that edge of that door over will be a uh, big display case here where we can put like the mannequins right inside dressed in, mm -hmm. in vintage clothing mm -hmm. so that we can see what they're up to. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is the way the town looked. Mm. About this actually about 1892. This building was built. Now, is that the street we're on right now? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Earlier that, that your parents came on Lewis and Clark Trail, where did they originate? Oh, my family? Yeah. Oh, Revolutionary War peoples. I have a tremendous genius. From where? Mm, from Massachusetts. Ma well, before then, from what European uh, area? Probably English. It was English. Yeah, the name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of Scottish mm -hmm. background. Yeah. They came in the 1790s, 1792. Yeah. yeah. Uh, down in here, vintage is it's always been. They have put the electricals in there. Looks Dutch to me. I was just telling Lisa, I went to a couple of places and I know the Dutch had to build it because it's so steep, you know. Yeah. Very Photograph here. 
that's how the so Huntington home mm -hmm. taught you. It's yeah. a, a charcoal or a pen and ink drawing of Bancroft mm -hmm. and the great authors, the great writers of our time, and their names are inscribed right along here. Mm -hmm. um, Mark Twain is in there. Mm -hmm. um, Bancroft, of course, is in the front there. Uh, Thoreau, Longfellow, mm -hmm. uh, Emerson, all the ones who in the early 1800s were. Yeah, and this I've seen in uh, art history. Mm -hmm. But the family, Huntington is in here too. There was a, a branch of the Huntington family in Longview, see. And somehow they got a copy of it. It's <coughs> in so the same frame, except it, in an earthquake it fell off the wall. Oh. Mm. I did a little damage to it. But in here, um, we can do lights. Mm -hmm. Or we can do lights. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, look at that. And, uh, or we can just take off lights mm -hmm. like that. Cool. Which is cool. It's all set up for lights. Cool. And uh, <coughs> I left this just like the Masons left it, mm -hmm. except I hung pictures on the wall. So I have a wall yeah. and I want to play. Yeah. And uh, we have our uh, Lions Club meetings in here. Mm. We have our uh, Toledo Historical meetings in here. We have hoping to have Indian historic historians in here. Hmm. Um, we're hoping to have watercolor artists teaching classes in here. And um, whatever else that works with the facility. Mm -hmm. But it has to be a quiet, thoughtful thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So I, uh, uh, if if uh, oh I see what you mean. Like earlier you said you came from a warring people. I was going to ask you, were well, your warring days over? Uh, <laughs> old, school, old school teachers never die. I guess Same. not. No, no. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Wonderful. The stagecoach here was the early mail delivery rig, and that's parked in front of the post office, which is 150 years old. Mm hmm. And then the one on the bottom is a freight line. What oh, is a freight line? Mm -hmm. And this the is the, the stagecoach. The, the mail, yeah. And he made route. He went out to Nav, and he went mm -hmm. to the lock and got the mail off the train. And uh, right down here on the river, where they were unloading at the Kellogg warehouse. Mm -hmm. Now there is, is hardly any water anywhere in Washington State right now. And uh, are you in the flood area too? Uh, well, the river floods. Oh, yeah. Because it's fed from Mount Rainier with the snow. Yeah. Floods, sure. It goes up another floor. Yeah, I don't have a lift up to it, but on the third floor is all the heating units. Mm -hmm. There's a furnace up there. It keeps this building at temperature all the time. Taller, three story building in this country down in here with an elevator. It's mm -hmm. rather unusual, I think. Um, <laughs> this is a fascinating. This is a wonderful map. A map? Okay. This, was, this particular map here was designed by the fellow from Longview that did the Daily News. But you can see we have our blockhouse and our fort showing 1855, 1856 when they had the Indian uprisings. But actually, it was the Cowlitz people who saved the white people from the Akamas here, mm. out here on our prairie. The Yakimas came that far they over? Came, yeah, well, they, they are mixed up with the Cowlitz mm -hmm. people. They are part of each group. And then we have another fort, Arkansas, here. And the story is on this one that when they built the Jefferson Davis Highway up through here, that many of the men who came out to work on this military road um, stayed. They camp, had a big camp up here, and they called it Fort Arkansas. <laughs> At least that's what I read. We didn't have too many blockhouses. We had one here in Rainier, Oregon. There, this was where all the people in this this lower area went to Rainier.
because they could be easily picked up and taken out uh, to Astoria. And then the people up in here, though, had to block it up here and here and then up at Borst Park in Centralia. They have a block house. another block house, mm -hmm. uh, like a square log facility with gun holes. Mm -hmm. And usually they set one like that and then set the other one kind of crossways. So mm -hmm. for stability, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But it was big enough inside for people to get in, and then if they were attacked, mm -hmm. they could actually peek out mm -hmm. by now, a little fort. In, El in Illinois, I was parked in front of a place, and the, the whole house was built that if you shoot, uh, you could duck, and, and the bullet would go from one side oh get come out on the other side. Uh -huh. Yeah, so that's kind of the opposite, yeah. That's the kind of building we need. Mm -hmm. uh, you just now. duck, yeah. This one is all real thick, heavy concrete walls. Mm -hmm. It's like a fortress. Yeah. Beautiful. When was it built? 1892. Any ghosts? Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. They're they're here. Are you familiar with them? Know, I don't know them yet. Yeah. I know they're here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, in the back, when you go out, there's back there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I think so. This uh, Vi said she could feel mm -hmm. uh, a spirit in here, and if you sit real quiet in here, you will feel a very quieting feeling, mm -hmm. very quieting feeling. Mm -hmm. And I haven't felt, now in my house in Rainier, definitely we have spirits in there. And when you're working, like you'll be fiddling with something and you'll feel kind of a cold mm -hmm. feeling come in behind you down there. That house has two definite beings living in it. And one is a, a lady who wears a red dress. Mm -hmm. And she's been sighted, I think, three times, mm -hmm. either in the yard, or around in the house, or mm -hmm. in the back. So you live in Rainier? Uh, yeah. You do? Yeah. Do you know Evelyn Cessna? She has the Seven Seas Ranch. I, I think I know the name because I chose to. I taught school there for 40 years. Yeah. And the name. Uh, Cessna, Jack Cessna. There was the big, uh, uh, that big insurance scandal in the 70s. Uh, they people that found that um, a federal way, and Evelyn was six, uh, was 84 years old. First time she ever told her story, and she came on my show. Oh yeah. And told what really what happened. She's a oh. wonderful person. Oh. Yeah. I kind of heard the name, but I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really uh, interesting that Cal is the meaning, meaning of Calvitz on this map. Mm -hmm. Calvitz is spelled C-O-W-L-E-E-T-Z is the Indian. Capture medicine spirit. The Indian mm -hmm. people spell it Calvitz, Calvish, Calvish, mm -hmm. yeah. Rainier is where many of the Calvitz people actually are buried. We have a big cemetery there in Rainier. No, Rainier, Oregon. Uh-huh. And... Oh, uh, Oregon. Oh, I yeah. keep talking about... Uh, I thought Rainier, Washington. No, I didn't. So you wouldn't know Evelyn says not at all. Okay. There's uh -huh. nothing up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's yeah, I, I was surprised. It's so just, that's uh, why it's I asked. Just yeah. Fort Lewis. Mm -hmm. Down here, though, the Cowlitz people, after the white people came in, they moved down and across the river and lived right down in here at Lindbergh. And uh, their chief died. He's buried right there in the town, and his gravesite is very visible. Mm -hmm. And the house that we have there, the uh, whole Dibley home, has two graves in the yard there. And uh, yeah, it's just full of artifacts in that whole area. So are the Cowlitz. Talk loud, Lisa. Are the Cowlitz recognized? Yes. Now? But they don't they have are recognized. Do they? they are recognized tribe, and they're out here at St. Mary's. They do have, they at have the mission. Land. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. They have an offices and headquarters oh, out really? there. That's at the mission here yes. in Toledo. They yeah. took over we the saw old, that, huh? uh, St. Francis mission. Oh, mm -hmm. interesting. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, thank you. We're welcoming. We're hoping yeah. for an interpretive center soon uh, mm -hmm. in this area. We'll have to stop and visit them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the Monday, if you go out Monday at 12 o'clock, mm -hmm. usually Mondays and Fridays, they have dinner at 12 o'clock and mm -hmm. invite guests. Mm -hmm. And it's a good time to visit the tribal peoples are there. And 
invite people, visitors, that are welcome to come on those mm -hmm. two days. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to They are. They're very, they're exciting because up in here where we are, they lived out on the lake, what they call Lake and Prairie, where you go on out east here and there's a big area out in there. And a uh, lot of the tribe lived, and then right down here on the Cowlitz is where they have their winter homes. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, there's, you could know wherever you go along the river here, you can pick up old arrowheads and all just all kinds of artifacts. They're just thick up here. Mm -hmm. I have a Easter Holy Casino mm -hmm. down in closer to Portland. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got lights. Her name is Valerie Brewster. She's a recognized watercolor uh -huh. artist in Oregon. She did those while she was in Hawaii. And they're done on, on natural handmade paper. Yeah, I see. And she uh, pictures up here. The, those flower things are hers. She's part of the, uh, what do you call it, the Watercolor Society National Recognition. So she's just done some good work. Pussy willows. Those are pussy willows? Oh, I didn't know that. They grow a lot around here. And the other one over there is a dog with yeah. native to this area. And that mm -hmm. one over there is a matrona tree native down here. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll do that matrona. Hang on a minute. A madrona tree. Ooh, it almost looks like one of the, the ones in the Kalahari. <laughs> go down that way. But in Bernie, my aunt's husband's family, three generations ago, 1860s, lived there and he ran the stagecoach stop there. You know, it's uh, it's amazing. When I started the TV show, I wanted to prove a point. This was five years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, because it's called a visit. There's so many different facets to this whole thing. And here recently I found that people really enjoy stories like that. It, originally I didn't do stories on, on places, oops, but people really enjoy them. So sure. that's how that came about, yeah. yeah. Well, I like to hear the real story. Yeah. Yeah, and... Uh, I have wonderful stories to tell about the house in Rainier. Mm -hmm. Sometime here we're, we're around and wanted to do that one. That's, that's a marvelous place. It was mm -hmm. built in 1851. Mm -hmm. It's probably the oldest house on the Columbia River. I don't know where Rainier is. I go to Union quite often. I, I did a story on that um, in La Grande at Hot Lakes at that yeah, sanitarium. That's a good one, yeah. I did a story on that and then at one of the old hotels in Union. Yeah. yeah. And so we just kind of worked it in with a paranormal theme. Yeah. But uh, here lately, I find this, it doesn't matter who you talk to. It's always the same thing, you yeah. know. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, and, and we've interviewed all the experts we care to. So so we go into the real stories now. Well, that wasn't fair, but we just like to do um, other things now. Yeah. That was kind of fun to go around and see what. Yeah. <laughs> This building is so neat. Yes, this is an espresso maker. Yeah. I have coffee on my brain. My daughter took a picture. Cool. Even coffee beans. Look at that. Some, that some, no, that's so fine. Look at that. That's pretty. Glare or not, we're going to show it to you anyway. And the Oregon Trail. Here's the fossil. A motorcycle. It's a motorcycle. keep all their information in their head? Mm -hmm. uh, I know 
I know a lot of people have good stories to tell. Right. I know they do. And we've been doing interviews, mm -hmm. collecting stories. But the compiling a whole book, I have a whole book of stories mm -hmm. from around this area. And I think pretty much everybody I talk to, there is some story mm -hmm. that works in. Hard sometimes for some people to tell their story. Oh, yeah. Because their story is their life. Mm -hmm. And when you tell your life, sometimes you see the down mm -hmm. instead of the high points. And people have a natural tendency, the mother said, don't brag. Right. So they must not brag on themselves. Yeah. And it's very difficult, I think, particularly for our older generation, mm -hmm. to tell what they did mm -hmm. and how they did things. But if they because don't... Because it, it, to them it was life. They were living. And right. life was very hard and very harsh. And out here in the West, my, my family first came West in 1869. Mm -hmm. And they've always had cattle, big cattle ranches. My grandfather always was on a horse. He had spurs, so you could hear him coming with a clink, clink, clink. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And, you know, he, did, he never thought he did anything special. Mm -hmm. so what are you doing? I am working today. He was 97 when he mm -hmm. died. He's still out checking his cattle. And I, I think the only way people can find a story is to find some common thread of, mm -hmm. you know, and talk. And then, then you find a story. Yeah. It's uh, hard. It's hard to bring it out. It's hard to find it. Yeah, Inside but a lot of people, they, they just don't want to talk about it, and then it's lost to the West because of us. It's, it's so because sad. Because there's sad things that happen to them. Yeah. And, and it just drums up sad things. Mm -hmm. And if you can, if you can instigate them to look at something, mm -hmm. and I've found right here. Hang on just a minute. And then, then you start to talk. Mm -hmm. And then all at once, he says, you know, I think that's my uncle. Mm -hmm. Oh, I remember that was so and so's car, and this was so and so's horse. Mm -hmm. And we came to town that day because this was our first cheese day. Mm -hmm. That was such an exciting day. Mm -hmm. Then the, the stories begin to roll. I interviewed uh, this Miss Kirkendall out here at NAB. She's 100 years old. It was her birthday. She died about a week after I talked to her. Mm -hmm. And that's what she just kept going. I have so much in my head to tell. Mm -hmm. And I was there probably. I didn't record it. But I took, <laughs> I did take some no, notes. Yeah. And these pictures are just just, uh, just museum mm -hmm. copies of stuff, you know. You could go up here to Lewis County Museum, much as I did, and just, they'll give you mm -hmm. all this stuff is on record up there. It's also on record uh, down here at the Cowlitz County. Mm -hmm. I could tell you the, the stories that go with all of this, but, mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I think that the trick in getting a good story is having some reference points, uh, mm -hmm. it's hard to come by, it's hard to find. I never have reference points. I just make it up as I go. As you go up. Yeah. Do you have any Native Americans here? And these men have been up here working the haywire. And they're just waiting to get a, the engines to push them back into Toledo at night. And you know, the sad part with the train would be coming. And they said here in town, they could hear the whistle blowing. And if they had, usually pretty much every day, but not always, mm -hmm. someone would have been killed in the woods. In the woods. The death rate was just tremendous. And they would just have the body on the flat car, and the train whistle would be called blowing when it came over the bridge over here. This is what the, the stories they tell. Mm -hmm. And they knew the undertaker, that was his signal to get down with his cart. Mm -hmm. And pick whoever up. This young fellow is setting uh, setting chokers. Oh, excuse me. The, these little things here, what they call Peter hooks. Mm -hmm. That's what 
dropped in that tree at the Polish ladies uh, at the hotel. Hmm. Uh, and I didn't know what that was. They called what? Peter Hooks. Peter Hooks. All oh, right. Now I know what that is. All right. They use them when they, when they set the cables. Mm -hmm. This is some of my husband's family. Mm -hmm. This was one of the old logging camps and all the little houses are on mm -hmm. flat cars so they can move them about. This was right out here in both places. Here's the first relatives that came from the old countries. Mm -hmm. they came. Oberg is German, huh? Sweet. Sweet. Oh, okay. Yumi all Sweden. Good. The whole family came. Even the mother. She finally came over. The kids all got over here. Mm -hmm. She was by herself. She finally moved over for a while. And she went home. This is the camp cooks. My husband's camp. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Very difficult living situation. She and her husband were married a year before they could tell anyone. Mm -hmm. The girls were not allowed to be married. If they were married, they could not be in love and care. Only single women worked in kitchens and served food. That's the way it was. Mm -hmm. They didn't want any married women in there. These guys are up on springboards. Mm -hmm. See the boards? Yeah. Well, on the sweet saw. Big old saws. We've got some of them. One of his cousins has a, like a logging museum down Excuse here. Me, he has sweet saws, boards. So, so much light coming. This is way. it too much light on it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's do this again. There you go. Now we got it. Mm -hmm. This is much better. This is a donkey here. See the donkey? Guy wires. They hook the logs on and then go. This was the, they had a fellow that gave all hand signals. Mm -hmm. That's something you want to record some way. Find somebody that knows the donkey hand signals and mm -hmm. record them. You know, slow, oh, mm -hmm. like that. <laughs> so you know some of them? Yeah, just a few. This one's to go. Uh huh. That's only what I know. This one's slow. Cool. And then you have a little thing you do like that. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know too many. Yeah, I remember watching my dad uh, give the signal for the logs that came. My husband and I were raised in logging camps. Mm. It's a hard, mm -hmm. really hard life. Yeah, well, you know, it's kind of a two edged sword. I did a show called Bang Bang, You're Dead. Mm -hmm. Where I showed, the, we went to the rainforest and then we showed all the mm -hmm. trees that is no longer there. Yeah. So it's, um, it's well, a double-edged sword. Yeah. yeah, we have Around to have here, trees so to plant them all back. Every yeah. tree is cut, you have to plant back so nobody logs. And then if you go out here, you can see all the reforestation. But where I went, they didn't log they them didn't, again. They no. didn't do it. No, and, um, no. But see what happened here? See how they clear cut in the early days? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This, see, this was right after World War I. Mm. But where I grew up, we had sec what they called second growth. And in 1900, right around the turn of the century, 1890s to 1910, they had already cut all the old growth out, logged it out. And then it grew back. And then about 1950, every 50 years, then they came through and did another cut. Yeah, but the respect for the environment is what it used to be, unfortunately. Well, oh, in those days, they just yeah. they just took the best stuff. The rest of it, they just left it lay, yeah. mm. rotted it out, mm. or oh, cut it in two. Uh, so, the, so you say the Native Americans did what? They had the a better trees? program because they used to just go out and light the woods on fire. On fire. So uh -huh. the, the elk and the deer could come uh -huh. down and there'd be grass for them. Yeah. And if they didn't burn the underbrush in the summertime and start forest fires. Of course, a lot of them were lightning hit, but a lot of times, particularly along the coast, the Indians always burned the, the brush in the mm -hmm. summer to hit the, so the deer had something to eat the next yeah. season. <laughs> okay. And that way the, the animals would come in closer so they didn't have to go so far to hunt. To hunt, how cool, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Some good ideas. Put the, the old windows, windows down. Uh-huh, how cool. Sun out during the day, uh -huh. so I don't get blinded up here. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what will happen if I have to have new windows. 
Well, we'll, we'll, come, oh, we'll come back one day when it's all, yeah, we're all done. Yeah. A lot of uh, and, and then, and here. Yeah, and then the whole thing is the little towns, they do need our support, you know. Well, yeah, just made up my mind for me because my battery went out. So oh, let oh, me thank you the, uh, for I doing this out. for us because it's going to shut off. Yeah, there you okay, go. I have to reload my battery and then, uh, and again, thank you for the second time. Yeah? Stuff it did. Uh, we really need to thank Marie Obert for showing us her, these were her personal treasures. And of course, I should have told you there was uncut footage to get that real effect. <coughs> but then I figured once I was scanning the walls, uh, you figured that out. Because anytime, sometimes you have ghosts, sometimes we can catch things on the wall. And um, of course, she did invite me to go to Rainier uh, and uh, do a story on her haunted house that, that, that she uh, lived in. And then you'll see the Oberks again uh, with the travel shows, actually. Uh, the name of the travel shows are called Herd of Turtles. And it, it would be in the, in the very first one there. And, uh, but, but sometimes it's hard to do an interview when you're not sitting down and you're moving around. And so I really want to give you the, um, the real life, you know, effect there. We had a wonderful time in Toledo. And again, for the people that want to go to, um, to the mountain, that's one of the towns that you have to go through. Now, I would think the Cowlitz River is a little vulnerable at this time because if there's any debris or anything coming from Mount Rainier, uh, I'm sorry, from Mount St. Helens, that would complicate things a little bit. We later met some people that told us that um, uh, one of the things about the river is that the color, uh, the color of the river is blue and green. And when they told us, we didn't quite understand what they meant. So they said we should uh, look at it in moonlight. Of course, the moon wasn't out right then and there. But uh, the end clip today, um, we're going to take you to the Cowlitz River uh, for five minutes and just kind of give you the idea what the man was talking about. And like he said, it is absolutely blue and green. We found the people really nice. She told us that to this day, uh, there's no, no mail delivery. You have to have to have a post office box and all the uh, residents go to the post office every day and they get their mail uh, from there and um, let's see and uh, people were friendly uh, Miss Oberg is uh, in possession of a phone number to the um, Bigfoot Society we haven't been there yet either and I don't know if I mentioned it or not but we will also go to the mission and the tribes and um, they had offered to take us to um, uh, the, uh, the Native Americans the, from the Cowlitz had offered us to um, go ahead and give us an interview and tell their version of the story. Now Highway 12 that we came in on, uh, it, it goes all the way to the um, Yakima Basin and then uh, the, the other side runs you right into um, uh, Westport and, and actually um, uh, Aberdeen to the ocean. So Highway 12 is kind of a crossroad there. We did stop at the uh, Jackson House and that's on one of the travel shows. And like I said, originally I was gonna put this in the middle, but with all the interest it gets flaring up with this area, um, I thought I'd show that to you now. And uh, so if you're in the area, they have wonderful things. Half of the things on, on the original clip uh, wasn't there anymore when we came back. And that little yin and yang teapot is still there um, because you know how I know. I called. I said, do you still have that teapot? And she said, yes. And she still won't sell me that alligator purse. But they did really well with the, with the table. In fact, that big round uh, red table, Originally, I thought it was uh, Mount St. Helens, but it turned out to be an oriental table, and that was the table that we used to do the predictions for 2005. So you have actually seen the table, and it's in the, in the middle of my living room. And uh, 
So if you get a chance to go there, just make sure you don't make that left and end up at Mount St. Helens and you can get off of it and enjoy that beautiful uh, clip of the um, Cowlitz River um, that we have just blue and green and wonderful. There's a little store, they have a deli where you can buy, um, uh, you know, like sandwiches and things. The tavern, in the end of the year show, the Hooters girl came from that tavern. Now, when we went, Barbara McGuire and myself, we stopped there originally to have lunch, and it was great. And we went back that night, and that was great. We've used some of these things as closing shots. The pinball machine, Uncle Festa came from there. The bubblegum machine came from there. And then, of course, the interview about the Haynes um, came from there. The, he was a gentleman from from the Midwest uh, that he explained what Haynes are rather than ghosts. Miss Oberg, from what I understand, is um, somewhat a historian for that whole area. She has lots of stories. We're trying to encourage her to put that book together so we can get a copy of it. But um, so give her a call and say, Miss Oberg, where's that book? The dog was so fluffy the first time we went, and he had a haircut. And uh, so he looked somewhat different. Next door to the antique shop is a bookstore. Now, that's how we originally got there. We was looking for uh, Lapsang Wampa books and uh, one by Ingo Swan, the remote viewer. And uh, we hooked up with the woman at the library there. And uh, just a nice, just a nice place. I don't know where to send you as far as um, uh, restaurants go. We were in the RV, and so we had our own food. And at the tavern, you can eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Just a wonderful place. And um, nice little town um, on the way to Mount St. Helens. You can get to it on the back roads. Um, or you can go I-5 and then turn off. I don't know how far it is to, um, uh, to Toledo from there. There's farmlands. Uh, they're sports oriented. There's a high school with many, many teams. And the people were just really nice and friendly. So when we told people we're going to Toledo, of course they thought Ohio. And, um, but it wasn't. It was Toledo, Washington. And then uh, coming back towards Olympia, Mount Ray, you can see Mount Rainier. You can see Helen. You can see, um, I'm not sure if you can see Adams, but you can see Mount Hood. And um, just, just really, really a nice day trip. Um, if you go to Walmart in Chehalis, you're almost there. You might as well just go another few miles and, and um, go see what kind of bargains awaits you. Um, in Toledo, and again, I really want to thank Marie for sharing her uh, her private stash of um, art and, and beautiful things that she had. And I'm not sure, but I think is that the Cowlitz River? And uh, it, it's beautiful in blue, green. And uh, is it the Cowlitz River? It is. So I'm going to be quiet and let you enjoy the river along with some music that we happen to catch on the radio well parked there. See you next week and um, with Claudia and happy journeys. <laughs>